Let's take a whirlwind tour of the Astra user interface. Log in and click on the dashboard link in the top left corner of the screen. At the top of the dashboard, you can see your current payment plan and your remaining credit balance. You can click the Add Payment button if you want to fill in your credit card information. Down here is a list of the databases you have created. You can see the amount of resources this database has consumed. There are two main types of screens to the Astra user interface, the dashboard screen and database-specific screens. In the top left corner, you can navigate between these screens. Notice in the very top left corner, there is a drop-down menu dealing with organizations. To understand what organizations are in Astra, let's look at this diagram. In Astra, an organization has users, roles, tokens, and databases. Databases contain key spaces, and key spaces contain tables. If the term key space is foreign to you, don't let it frighten you. A key space is just a container of tables. You can assign roles to users, which authorizes users to perform various activities. Roles have privileges, which authorize users to perform specific activities. For example, certain privileges let users create databases or read and write data to tables. Back to the Organizations drop-down menu, select the Organization Settings option. We see from the navigation on the left that we can manage users' roles, tokens, billing, and notifications. We see the User Management option allows us to invite other users to join this organization. The Role Management option lets us define custom roles. Each organization comes with a set of predefined roles, which we will see here in a moment. But if you want to customize a role specifically for your organization, click the Add Custom Role button. When you click the button, you see the list of permissions you can add to the custom role. And down at the bottom of the list, you see that you can limit these privileges to specific key spaces. Let's click on the Token Management option. We use application tokens to access Astra databases from your application. Here, you see a list of tokens. Notice that each token has a client ID and a role. The client ID is like a username, and the role designates which scopes or privileges this client may perform. We can create a new application token by selecting a role and clicking Generate Token. When we select the role, we see the list of privileges associated with the role. Generating a token creates a new client ID, a client secret, and a token. You use the client ID in secret if you want to access your database using CQLSH, which is a CQL command shell. But for access using the APIs, you can use the token. With this button, you can download these credential values as a CSV file, which is important. Because for security reasons, once we leave the screen, there will be no way to retrieve these values again. However, if you need to, you can always delete a token here and generate a new one. We'll skip the billing and payment option because we're using our free credit. But if you decide to set up payments, you can enter your credit card info here. You don't need to be concerned with security settings as that applies to legacy databases that were created before the current token-based system. Notifications allow you to receive emails when specific events occur. To get back to the dashboard, click on the Astra link up here. Let's click on the database name to see that screen. On the databases screen, again, we see the resources consumed by the database. Notice these tabs across the top. Currently, we are looking at the Overview tab. The Health tab shows us various database performance metrics so you can monitor your database. The Connect tab gives us various ways to connect to the database. For example, we see we can use various APIs, or we can connect using various programming languages. As we click on these connections on the left, we see the instructions for how to use them on the right. 
After we complete the user interface tour, you might want to come back and explore these connections in detail. Down here, we also see some other tools we can use, including the JavaScript SDK. The next tab is the CQL console. CQL is the Cassandra query language. It looks a lot like SQL. You don't have to know CQL to use Astra, but if you do, this console is very helpful. From the setting tab, you can perform two operations, parking a database and deleting a database. Parking a database takes the database offline. You can always unpark the database when you need to use it again. Deleting a database completely removes all data and metadata. You can delete a database, but remember, once you delete it, the data is gone forever. Oh yeah, one last thing. You can find all of the Astra documentation by clicking on this icon down here. That concludes our tour of the Astra user interface. Since Astra is simple to use, we are able to keep the tour short. Now, we recommend that you click on the Connect tab and explore how to create and use AstraDB tables.